The AR-15 is superb, it is the best, but for whatever reason you find yourself wanting something else, I have a list for that. What's up everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at y'all today with another top five video. This one's all about the top five AR-15 alternatives because ARs are so prevalent, market is saturated with them. What else is out there? And I'm about to show you guys a couple of cool guns. At least I think they're cool. They're on my list. Now sure, there's some guns that may have qualified for the list. I'll have a couple of honorable mentions towards the end. But let's go ahead and kick it off with uh, The SCAR. Now this right here is the SCAR 17 chambered in 308, so this is representing uh, what I want it to be, which is the SCAR 16. And I've got a lot of feelings, right? It's low on my list because, well, it's not all that modular. It does have a monolithic rail, or it's a monolithic upper receiver, which is super cool, but it's short, right? So, but imagine the SCAR 16, pretty much the 556 little guy compared to this one. I've been playing with this setup more and more, and I find myself kind of liking it more and more, all right? I, there, I said it. I, I know I give the SCAR a lot of hate, but at the same time, hey, it's on my list, and I do have a good time shooting this system. Now, there are some things I've had to do to it to actually, like, make it fun shooting. One of them is replace the grip. We've got the Troy Industries Battle Axe grip here, which has a better grip angle. It's not an A2, so anything's better than an A2. But ultimately, I actually do have a good time shooting this gun. And the 5.56 one, again, utilizing a short stroke piston driven system, it's going to be a easy gun to shoot. Even the 7.62 model is. So that's why it's on my list, because it is different than an AR, obviously. But I am liking it more and more. And one of the things that made me like it better is by simply switching the side that the charging handle is on. Because yes, it is reciprocating. It means it does that every time you pull the trigger, but it travels the whole length there, whole full length of travel. So hand placement's kind of a big deal. You don't want it to hit you, but it's actually not that big of a deal at the end of the day. All right, I get it. Now, of course, the one that I really want to talk about, that I really want to shoot, but I have zero experience with, is the SCAR SC, the subcompact boy that is out there, and it exists. This would be actually probably higher on my list. It is the compact version of the SCAR 16, so still chambered in 5.56, but the technology imp like implemented in this guy is better because it doesn't have a reciprocating charging handle, nice collapsible stock on that guy, and it's right now only available for like law enforcement, military, so that sucks. But anyway, maybe they'll come out with a civilian variant with a pistol brace, maybe. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, SCAR's number five on my list. Let's, um, let's move to something a little bit more traditional for my number four. Yes, the Galil Ace is featured on this video, and Alec will be happy to know that it is ranked higher one position higher, at least in my book, than the SCAR. Of course, I know for him, the SCAR wouldn't even make his list. So let me know down in the comments, do you think it even deserved to be on the list? Let me know. But the Galil Ace is on here and it is a super, super cool firearm. Originally based off of the Galil Ace Gen 1, but that had to start from somewhere and that was the OG Galil that we all know and love. And we've got right here, the James River Armory Gallant. And this is a super cool rifle. Started off as a battle rifle chambered in 7.62 NATO. And what we've got here is more of that carbine aesthetic. But if you ask me, it's still a battle rifle in my book, even though it is chambered in 5.56. Very light recoiling gun and just ultimately a lot, a lot of fun. These guns work extremely well, very reliable, very rugged, and what the Israelis have done over at IWI has pretty much taken that Galil design and then modernized it, especially with the Gen 2. We're seeing an upgraded rail. We're gone from a thick boy Picatinny rail now to a free-floated M-Lock rail, which is super cool. We've got a little bit lighter weight in it. It is utilizing a polymer lower on it, like the original one, uh, but this guy here, the ergonomics on it feel just a little bit better. It does utilize a last round bolt hold open, unlike the OG there, but that's okay. And of course, the charging handle on this, like the Galil, is reciprocating, but as far as hand placement on it, I'm not really too worried because just about anywhere I would actually place my offhand, or excuse me, my weak hand, I 
wouldn't be running any type of interference on it. So even though I can't switch it to the other side, it's not ambidextrous in that sense. It's still very easy to avoid when I don't want to actuate it, but yet still very obvious to where I can run it without a problem. So I like it, all right? Now this is a pistol variation. They make these still in 762 by 39. They make the Gen 1 still in 762 NATO, and they make them in rifle or pistol configurations. The only thing that I have a problem with on this guy, and I do believe it's because of importation issues, so this is just making it known for y'all, is the, <laughs> it does have an SBA3 adjustable brace, but, it only locks into place in the very much so collapsed position. Again, I think it has something to do with overall length, importation, something along those lines, but it would be easy enough to, you know, change out the buffer tube or add a different brace, whatever you guys want to do once it's yours. But that's just me personally, but the Glue Ace is a rocking firearm rifle if you get it in that configuration pistol in this configuration and is definitely on my list now i know i said leading up to this guy I was going to something more traditional what if we go even more traditional for my next pick oh yeah <laughs> ak has entered the chat when talking about <laughs> <laughs> An AR alternative, you dang right. I'm bringing it up, guys. I've got right here the Zestav Arms Z85. It is a 5.56 chambered AK system, and I love it. This thing is a heck of a lot fun to shoot. Just imagine the AK, but shooting 5.56. It's pretty awesome. But there's actually a gun here that I really want to talk about. So these kind of share the position because they are fairly similar but the AK-19, which was just recently announced and is a very neat looking 5.56 alternative AK system as well, but it definitely is the AK modernized for sure. Now the AKM is an AK modernized, but further modernized, all right? We've got Picatinny running the full length of the upper receiver in the rail, so pretty much the dust cover and everything. It's just a very neat looking gun, very modern, very, it be it's it just seems like it's better to me all around, but don't have any of those here yet. Maybe I don't know. We'll, we'll hopefully see. But I do have a AK pistol here, chambered in 5.56. The Z85 and Zestava is a fantastic manufacturer of firearms. First off, on these guys here, they do have the bulge trunnion on them, which I think is just something very neat that they add that extra strength right there where a lot of pressures are developed. Nice. This one also does feature a hinged dust cover, so it does have a rail that's integrated, which is neat. So if you wanted to put an optic on there, you can. And one thing that's typically a concern about uh, optics mounted to the dust cover on AK systems is whether or not they will actually hold zero after you remount the dust cover from removing it for basic maintenance. And what's neat about having a hinged option is, well, you just open it up, it's hinged right in place, and now you're back right where you were before. And it's nice, and it's sturdy, and I like that. It makes it a lot easier instead of trying to jam and do all this type of stuff. I know it's not that big of a deal. A lot of you AK guys are already down in the comment section, you know, grow up, be a man, you know, it's fine, whatever. Cool, I got it, but why not make your life a little bit easier, okay? Come on, guys. Anyway, what's also neat about this one here is, again, this is a pistol variant, and it does have the M4 buffer tube option, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot because you can throw a brace on it. If you did want to SBR on it, SBR it and throw a stock on there, you can. It's just a nice system that offers quite a bit to you. And also, too, the AK system in general, even the 7.62x39 or... 545 model, the 74, they're just fun. They're reliable, they've been around for decades, and they work really, really well. So you can't go wrong with that, all right? But uh, yeah, the Z85 is up here for sure. And now we're gonna go ahead and move right back to the future and talk about a little bit of bullpup action. We've got ourselves yet another Israeli firearm up here because, well, they are pretty good innovators when it comes to the firearms field. And what we've got right here is the IWI X95 Tavor chambered in 5.56. They actually make these in 300 blackout, which I think in this barrel length would be spicy. This is actually a short barreled rifle and an, and, and an NFA item. <laughs> Words can get hard here. So this is a regulated item, unfortunately, but uh, it is what it is, right? So this guy right here came around 
in the, about the late 2000s and pretty much was, and for a while, and still is a standard issue of the Israeli Defense Forces. It is a very compact firearm, as you can tell, and that's just because of its nature as a bullpup. And a bullpup style firearm, I should say. And what exactly does that mean? Like the Styrog, which almost made the list. This guy's just a little bit more modular, a little bit more modern for me and why I prefer it over the Styrog, even though the Styrog is a great gun and I do enjoy shooting it. I like this one better. But that being said, a bullpup is, all it is is where the magazine is loaded, is towards the rear of the gun, behind the trigger housing, behind the actual trigger itself. That is where your firing sequence takes place all back here. So the barrel actually runs right back here. This is actually a 13 inch barrel on this guy, which is pretty sweet, all right? But bullpups are cool. Like I said, because of their compact and ergonomic design, think about where the magazine is located here. You can pop the mag out on this guy. And if the bolt is locked to the rear, for instance, you just got done shooting, cool, bolt's locked to the rear, drop that mag, insert this mag, notice where your thumb is, hit that, and that's right where your bolt release is. We actually tested this theory about whether or not it's actually quicker, and quicker than the AR, I mean, as far as a quick reload, and I actually was a little bit quicker, a few milliseconds quicker with a bullpup than I was the standard AR. And I've got a lot more practice, a lot more time shooting an AR than I do a bullpup. So pretty interesting. It's amazing what ergonomics can do for you, right? But anyway, this guy right here, it's a fun little gun. I enjoy it quite a bit. It's a popular firearm for a lot of people and mostly an ambidextrous design, which is also pretty cool. Uh, pretty much actually ambi all the way around, which is nice. And it also includes integrated sights, which is a nice feature, all right? But anyway, bullpup is fun, <laughs> shortly said. Now, before we roll into our number one, yes, I do have a few honorable mentions. Of course, the Styrog, as I've already talked about. How about the Ruger Mini 14? That one was America's carbine for quite a while, along with the M1 carbine. Kind of similar in my mind due to their action and, you know, everybody's favorite style action up there, right? But the Mini 14 has been around for decades. I've had one, grew up with one also. They're just fun guns, chambered in 5.56. But they've kind of fallen out of favor a little bit since the AR-15 because of how much more customizable and modular the AR system is over it. Makes sense to me, right? But with that being said, let's roll in to my number one. Now what was my number one was actually the SIG MCX, okay? That is a cool gun, but Ryan wouldn't let me because we also featured it in like our top ARs, so I kind of cheated there, so I guess, oh well, karma, right? But the reason it's different though than an AR is because of its short stroke system, which is very cool, but it's also very similar in its controls and everything else. So that being said, it's actually our current giveaway for my number one, the CZ Bryn 2. I haven't really thought a whole lot about this gun uh, until obviously we've had it in for a little while, but it sat for a little bit. And I was like, you know what, let me take this guy to the range and actually shoot it. And uh, I really enjoy shooting this gun. It has a great trigger right out the box. It is actually pretty modular. Uh, you, It has a sleeve on the inside of the magazine well, so if you wanted to actually pop that sleeve out, you can now start accepting the 7.62x39 mags that this takes, switch the bear out and a couple of other components, and now you've got a 7.62x39 gun. It has a monolithic upper receiver for the most part. And the reason I say that is because the rail can actually be removed. You can replace the rail and you can, well, make it longer, shorter, whatever you want to do. Actually, I think this is pretty much as short as you can go. In this setup, this is actually not my preferred setup. I would love this system instead of the eight inch barrel, the 11 inch barrel, especially for the 5.56 cartridge. You are just getting more velocity, better velocity, better ballistics from that cartridge at that barrel length. And that's what I like about that. But this is a pistol as well. And I've made the joke a couple of times and I'm gonna make it again. I've mentioned the SCAR 16 at the very beginning of this video because, well, it's the last one on my list. This is everything I think the SCAR 16 wishes it could be. It's a little bit lighter, more modular, <laughs> more better overall. And I just really like it. The only problem is I don't have it in 308. They don't make the CZ Bryn 2 MS and 308 for us regular folk, right? Maybe due to importation restrictions, maybe they're actually working on it. I don't know, but I haven't really heard much from CZ about it. And last time I talked to him about it, they said, 
don't talk about it. So of course I'm gonna talk about it. That's what I do. I want the Bren 2 in 308. Sorry, but uh, anyway, overall really cool gun. Complete ambi design, which is very nice. You can switch the charging handle if, out if you want. Guess what, it's not reciprocating, that's super cool. M-Lock rail, which is also very nice. Now granted, the rail space on the little guy here is minimal, but there is still at least one space there, so I know I could comfortably attach a flashlight to it if I wanted to, a grip maybe on that one spot, but more so probably just a hand stop. But honestly, the ergonomics and how this gun feels is great. One downside is though, I did notice while shooting shooting this guy, it gets hot quick. So if you don't have any rail covers or gloves, you will start to fill it after a couple of continuous mag dumps. Cause that's what I like to do. Other than that, very neat gun, short stroke system as well, like the MCX that I was talking about before. And this one here I did couple with also an M4 mil spec buffer tube and the SBM4A brace. I'm a huge fan of this brace. It's a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more stout and has a little bit larger surface area, surface area for a comfortable cheek weld because it's not a stock but it sure is comfortable all right so i will say all of that and when i talked about ambi controls i mean it you've got mag release on the left hand side which they actually did right some manufacturers you'll find that have the complete ambi controls and it feels fine but you can definitely tell it is more of an afterthought not something that went into the design of the firearm with this guy here which also features a polymer lower help you know mitigate some weight this guy here that is a very positive and intuitive control for the magazine release. Nicely done. Even the bolt release on this guy, you'll notice, is actually inside the trigger guard, which I didn't know how I was gonna like at first, but you can kind of tell here, not a whole lot to actually put a bolt release on the right-hand side. So they went ahead and put it inside the trigger guard. I'm like, well, is it that? Yeah, it's actually pretty easy to get a hold of. So I like that quite a bit. Maybe it could loosen up a little bit. But one other thing I like about it though is if I wanted to lock the bolt to the rear, it's easy enough to do that as well. And that's probably what I would use that more so for. So it's easier to clear any type of malfunction you may have or just do a quick chamber check, whatever it might be. Of course, it's also easier to send home whenever you've got a loaded mag or no mag inserted. So just showing that out there. Anyway, CZ Bryn 2 MS is at the top of my list only because the SIG MCX wasn't allowed to be. All right, <laughs> granted a standoff between those two would be pretty difficult. I know the MCX is a little bit heavier, but it is a sweet, sweet system. So if we were to do a comparison between the two, well, first off, I would actually need to get an MCX. I have a 300 Blackout Rattler, but that's a 300 Blackout Rattler, not the MCX 556 chambering that I need to get a hold of. So. If you guys have one that you're wanting to part with, let me know. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. By the way, like I said, this is our current giveaway. And here at Classic Firearms, we are your one-stop shop for everything you could possibly ask for when it comes to the Second Amendment. And that includes free guns, all right? Don't know if too many others out there that give away as many guns as we do, but until it uh, really starts to cost us, you know, what am I talking about? We're giving away like a bear a week, so whatever. That was an exaggeration, at least once a month. Maybe once every other month. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Make sure you head on over to our website, classicfirearms.com, to get your entries. We do have this guy up for grabs right now. Code word, Bryn. Pretty simple, right? I think so. I'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.